Scott Hall is going to make his debut at WCW in May 1996. And rumor has it that you came up with the idea for him to come down through the crowd. Can you confirm that? Well, yeah. I um, <laughs> There was a big meeting going on. They were laying out some stuff. And then Eric looked around and said, has anybody got any comments? And I went, um, I do. And then everybody there, the Crockett's, you know, and they all, they all look at me like, <gasps> <laughs> and I said, look it, here's what I would do. And I laid it out because instead of Scott doing some idea where he's just sitting at ringside half the show like a nobody, you know, I mean, if it's an invasion angle, have him invade. Have a match going on in the ring and have Scott walk right down and butt in and the two guys go, what the hell's he doing here? And make it make it look real. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing now, I mean, the, the fans enjoy it for what it is, but to make the fans love it more and get into it more, the wrestlers have to believe it's real, you know, when they get in the ring. I mean, if you're in a real fight with a big guy, you're not going to slap them in the chest and knock your head off, you know. So do like, what would you do with this guy if it was real? But so I suggested, you know, how Scott entered and started and then the other guy and how to build up some things. And then Eric, then it got so hot, Eric wanted to be in there. So we programmed stuff and I put together a thing for me and Eric that we had a match, you know, where I saved Nitro from the New World Order, you know, and all that. And then he was smart enough to listen to good ideas. He was. And yeah, it's uh, uh, that's the other kind of thing that we hear all the time about Eric was like, yeah, you know, a lot of people criticize him for maybe not having a great knowledge of the business. But he was, however, smart enough to like kind of uh, take people's opinions backstage, whether it be you or Hulk Hogan or Hall and Nash, like people would come to him with ideas and oh, you're, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's willing to accept them. So it's uh, good yeah. that he recognized he didn't just know everything. Well, no, he knew, but you know, I mean, he got the idea over some years, but then he was smart enough. Someone had a good idea, great. If it's stupid, forget it. <laughs> you know, I mean, now, was, uh, uh, yourself and Scott, you had a relationship from your days in the AWA together. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, I, Winnipeg, Canada, some years, I don't know when, 80. Some guy said to me, oh, hey, you're wrestling a new guy, a brand new guy. His name's uh, Scott Hall or something. And I said, oh, really? Is this like a new guy? So I'm thinking, oh, God, here's some new guy that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So, you know, I'll figure out something. Because in them days, we weren't even in the same dressing rooms. It was oh, okay. a different, different business. So I go out. And the guy goes, oh, there he is, this guy, Scott Hall. And I look down at the hallway, and there he is, six foot six, six seven, you know, 280, 90, whatever he was, and young. I'm going, oh, my God, I can get killed. <laughs> so I had my, <laughs> a match with Scott, but it went really good, and he listened and, and kind of thanked me for showing him some stuff for years over that very first match we had in Canada. Yeah, and I know that he credits you and did, or did credit you for many, many years uh, for, you know, putting him over and making him look good early on. And I know that he never forgot it, which is apparently going to kind of play into uh, the storyline that the two of you are going to have here. Um, before we get there, though, Hogan, of course, is going to join Hall and Nash in the NWO, and the thing is just going to take off like a rocket, in part because nobody could have predicted the heel turn for Hogan. Uh, when you're sitting there and seeing this huge turn after, you know, Hogan spent years as the most mainstream babyface ever, uh, what are you thinking? Well, I listened to the crowd, and after it happened... I thought it was great because the people bought it. I mean, Hulk had a true heat. They they were mad at him for real, you know. So it worked out great. So I would, you know, good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how can you argue Let's with this? These contracts coming, baby. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good. That's probably the way to look at it too. Is like, hey, the company's success is my success. It's just yeah, gonna mean, and, and, and the fans love it more. It's if it's a success, that means the fans are loving it. 
Yeah. They, they certainly did. And Hall and Nash and Hogan were just all over the product and super over. And it doesn't take long before Scott is going to start singling you out in promos. And uh, when the NWO takes over the commentary table, he'll give you a hard time. And it's, it's <laughs> it looks like we're building to something. Um, who had the idea to get you physically involved in wrestling again? You know what? It, it kind of happened unexpectedly. I was doing the commentating on a show maybe just at the very beginning of the New World Order thing. And, and the table was next to the ring side. It was, it was by, by the ring apron before they built the set. So I'm sitting there at the ring side, and Scott was in the ring, and he had a match with somebody and beat him, you know, was doing his thing. And then he came over, and I had no idea what he was going to do. He came over to the top rope, to the ropes, looking down at where the, I was sitting next to Shivani or whoever. And when he looked at me, I went, that's it. I ripped off the headsets and I stood up. And when I stood up, the crowd blew the roof off the place. I mean, to the point where I didn't expect it. It was like, and me and Scott both looked at each other and we talked through our eyes and we said, basically, People want to see this. Mm -hmm. And the way I program stuff, because I knew people wanted to see that so bad, I programmed the me and Eric saving Nitro, the pay-per-view before I wrestled Scott, because I knew people wanted to see that so bad. Yes. I programmed it out. It's so awesome. It and like I mean, I stood up the crowd one. And we just knew that they they, they want to see this. Scott is a performer that was really highly regarded. He had great, great look, great mic skills, great ring work. Um, and this is something that comes up a lot. And Ad Free Show's researcher, Andrew Hermes, also was curious about you and your thoughts on this. Uh, do you feel like he's the best to never become a world champion? Who, Scott? Yes, sir. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, do if you're over, you know, like Scott was, it doesn't matter if you're the world champion or not in terms of drawing money and being of value. And, and Scott did a great job. I mean, he, God, it was such a sad thing. I mean, he has a problem, but he, he had the ability to come walking out with the toothpick and talk, made bad guy, you know, being cool. And, and he was really a talented guy. And yeah, I, could talk, I mean, yeah, it, it really breaks my heart, you know, to know he had a devil in him, but he was a really a talented guy. And, and it was like a night off being with him in the ring, doing stuff, you know. You stayed pretty close with him over the years, didn't you? Well, you really didn't stay close with anybody too much, but. And, you know, I live in Orlando, and he had a place not far down the road. So we'd see each other once in a while, and I think for a while at the house here, we were filming something in this corner. Or uh, uh, last Call with Scott Hall, I think he was calling Last Call with Scott Hall or something yeah. for a while when things were starting. And I know nothing about computers or social medias or tweeting or Instagramming. Or I know. I have a flip phone, Marcus. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I only had a flip phone. So yeah. I miss those days. 